Berlin has insisted the migrant burden should be shared by the entire European Union, set to receive 800,000 refugees this year. Germany is struggling to provide housing and security, and the public is split, those who welcome the newcomers and those who don't. CCTV's Guy Henderson is in Berlin. Guy, tensions are rising in some parts of the country. Well, yes, although uh, anti-immigration sentiment uh, across Europe um, has been on the, the rise for, for some weeks and, and months now, Susan. But what is uh, apparently specific to Germany is the level of violence that goes with that anti-immigration sentiment. Uh, there are reported uh, isolated incidents taking place across parts of this country almost every single day. Um, but saying that um, while those people might be um, particularly active, uh, they are in a minority, uh, huge uh, or a significant um, pro-immigration rally and pro-refugee rally took place in Dresden uh, this weekend. Um, and one specific incident in a tiny uh, hamlet on the North Baltic coast of Germany uh, seems to have galvanized people uh, in that area in a community which on any other weekend but this one uh, the majority of the population in that tiny community would be neo-Nazis. The Yama Rocks Festival is packed to capacity. More than a thousand people have come to this tiny village to show support for this year's theme, tolerance. The refugee crisis is testing few European nations as hard as Germany, which is braced to receive as many as 800,000 asylum seekers. Two weeks ago, someone burnt down Horst and Birgit Luchmeier's barn, they suspect it was neo-Nazis. There has been harassment against us for years, such as slashing our car tires. There are verbal assaults against us. We had to deal with this for all those years, but this is a whole new level. On stage, politicians vow support for the Lochmeyer's cause. But just 100 metres away, a very different message. Now, the situation in this tiny hamlet is really quite bizarre. On the one side, there's this concert going on under the theme of tolerance. On the other side, under the watchful eye of some police officers, are the Lumayers' neighbours. Now, they've constructed this mural which reads free, social, national. That, of course, is an untoo subtle allusion to the Nazi party of the 1930s, which was formerly known as the National Socialist Party. And just a few metres away as well is a sign which points towards Hitler's birthplace. Yamal is a unique case, but visible signs of neo-Nazi sentiment is erupting elsewhere in Germany. In the state of Saxony, far-right protesters clashed with police several times in recent weeks. They're a small but active minority. In this German state, a neo-Nazi party holds five seats in the state parliament. Its spokesperson is reluctant to condemn the violence that's so far not been as prevalent here. I see that in vielen Orten Locals using their fundamental rights to take to the streets and protest, which is their right. If someone speaks up against this massive influx of strangers, they are being immediately labelled as neo-Nazis or right-wing radicals. But we don't care. This doesn't make what we demand any worse. There is less tension here, but authorities express concern over a situation that appears to be getting worse. Yes, there are attacks against refugees and against refugee accommodation, and those attacks are increasing. But this is just a small faction of society that has these radical beliefs. What is much worse is that there is resentment growing out of the middle of society, and there is xenophobia because people here are not used to dealing with foreigners. Here the Lofmeyer's message resonates as it does with the thousands of pro-refugee demonstrators in Dresden on Saturday. But there remains a question of safety from a minority of Germans who are prepared to do this. Guy, tell us what is likely to come out of this EU meeting. Uh, well, uh, France and Germany had, had discussed putting together a, a document which they were to present at an EU leaders meeting towards the end of the year. But clearly, given that this meeting now of what will be if it happens, uh, a meeting of EU justice uh, and interior ministers, clearly they felt that they couldn't wait uh, that long. What we expect out of it, um, according to official statements uh, from these three countries, uh, Germany, France and the UK, uh, is firstly 
um, a common European policy on what constitutes a safe country of origin. That is a country where normally people from that country wouldn't be granted refugee status uh, within the European Union. Secondly, what they're hoping to agree on uh, is setting up um, registration centres at hotspots like Italy and Greece, as you've mentioned, countries that are struggling to cope uh, with uh, refugees as they flood through the Mediterranean, flood uh, through uh, Balkans countries. What they are not expected to agree on and what continues to be a, a source of fierce debate between these EU countries is what happens to those um, refugees, those asylum seekers, once they are registered. Because uh, a country like Germany, which is expected to take in 800,000 or so uh, asylum seekers by the end of the year, uh, is in stark contrast to a country like the UK, which takes in uh, less than half that number, but is very reluctant to take in any more than that. Guy Henderson, thank you for the update. Live in Berlin.